Aspiring Republican politicians from David Perdue in Georgia to J.D. Vance in Ohio have decided the path to power in their party requires fully embracing Donald Trump and his lies about the 2020 election, even as more damning evidence emerges about Trump's attempted coup. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. We keep getting more bombshell text messages implicating more members of Trump's inner circle in the attempt to overturn the 2020 election results. And today, a new batch of text messages revealed this message from Trump's advisor and daughter Ivanka to a group chat of Trump's closest advisors two days after the election. On November 5th, Ivanka Trump text Meadows and the group, quote, you are all warriors, capital letters, of epic proportions. Keep the faith and the fight. She's trying to overturn the results of an election with the tone of a Peloton instructor. <laughs> you are all warriors of epic proportions! Let's crank up that resistance to 30 and ride to some fallout boy! Also, just a tip, if you're planning a coup, maybe don't do it via group chat. Hey guys, just wanted to have all our secret communications in one place in case anyone needs to access them in the future. Here's an idea, should we do the coup on TikTok? I think that would totally slay LMK. <laughs> then there's House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy who denied a report last week that he said he would urge Trump to resign after the insurrection and then he was caught on tape saying he would urge Trump to resign. Putting everything else aside, how do these guys keep getting caught on tape lying or contradicting themselves? Donald Trump, Giuliani, Michael Cohen, Kevin McCarthy, they all have tapes. Is everyone in pro-Trump circles so paranoid that they're constantly wearing microphones strapped to their heads? <laughs> Unfortunately, aspiring Republicans still clearly believe that the path to success in their party goes straight through Trump. Most of them are open about it and don't care how ridiculous it makes them look. For example, here's Senator Lindsey Graham on January 6th. 2021, the day of the insurrection, versus Lindsey Graham last week on Fox News. Trump and I, have, we've had a hell of a journey. I hate it being this way. Oh my God, I hate it. From my point of view, he's been a consequential president. But today, first thing you'll see. All I can say is uh, count me out, enough is enough. Donald Trump is the leader of this party, not Kevin McCarthy, not Lindsey Graham, not Newt Gingrich. Well, based on the I'm American First Agenda. He... Yeah, I'm hoping soon he will lay out a positive agenda. That's it. I've had enough of this guy, enough to prove to me that he is the future of the Republican Party. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, you're hoping Donald Trump will lay out a positive agenda now? Because everyone knows you radically change your personality when you hit the age of 75. When I turn 75, I'm gonna drop everything, move to Santa Monica, dye my hair bleach blonde, and become one of those jacked shirtless dudes that do sit-ups by the pier at 5 a.m. <laughs> I just want to stipulate that I gave the graphics department free reign to do whatever they wanted with that photo, and as usual, they decided to me. <laughs> That's a not a sit-up. <laughs> but seriously, what is wrong with these guys? Trump already ran for president, was president, ran for president again, staged a coup to stay in power, and never once changed through any of that. You think now he's gonna wake up one day, look in the mirror and say, you know what, instead of trying to overthrow democracy, I should sit down and come up with a detailed infrastructure plan. Eric, fetch me my inkwell and my thinking slippers. <laughs> and I have an English accent now too, Eric. <laughs> I'm a new man. It's also both funny and depressing how definitive Trump toadies were on January 6th and how quickly they backed down. Lindsey Graham, would have made such a <laughs> brave heart. They may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. But also, I think I might have a way for us to get both our lives and our freedom, and that's to listen to these British fellows, because they're not all bad. <laughs> Republicans are all desperate to please Trump and willing to debase themselves in the most humiliating ways possible in order to do it, like when Texas Senator Ted Cruz committed the grave GOP sin, calling the insurrection a violent terrorist attack, then got criticized by Tucker Carlson for saying that, and then had to go on Tucker's show the next day to grovel and beg for his forgiveness while Tucker embarrassed Cruz with a chyron that said, cruising for a bruising, what on earth was Ted Cruz thinking? First of all, you couldn't think of something better than that, cruising for a bruising. I mean, that's been done, my man. You gotta do something like you cruise, you lose, or carnival cruise, or I don't know, clear eyes, full hearts, can't cruise. <laughs> These are just pitches, it's brainstorming, there are no bad ideas. Well, I guess going to Cancun when your home state suffered a weather emergency, that's a bad idea. That right there is a bad idea. I guess if you really 
wanting to embarrass Ted Cruz, you could also just cut off the electricity to his house during a snowstorm and see which exotic tourist destination he flies to next. And now, Senator Ted Cruz joins us from the Cinnabon in Terminal 4 at JFK, where he's waiting for his connection to Monte Carlo. I stand with the people of Texas. Oh, wait, hold on. They just called my group. I got aboard. <laughs> Aspiring Republican politicians clearly think this is what they have to do to succeed. Please Trump, embrace his authoritarian ambitions, and repeat his lies about the 2020 election, like former Georgia Senator David Perdue, who lost to current Democratic Senator John Ossoff in a runoff election in January 2021. Purdue is now running against incumbent Republican Governor Brian Kemp as a full pro-Trump election liar who blames his own loss on non-existent voter fraud and opened a debate with Kemp last night by saying this. First off, folks, let me be very clear tonight. The election in 2020 was rigged and stolen. Our governor caved and allowed radical Democrats to steal our election. And because of that, he has divided our party and cannot win. He sold us out and cost us the majority of the United States Senate. I'm proud to have President Trump's endorsement. Wow, that was like watching Helly read the break room apology on severance. Too soon to reference severance in a closer look? We talk about the show a lot in the office, but we do want to make sure you, the audience, are caught up enough to enjoy the reference. I will say, based on the absence of noise, I'm going to say no, but... <laughs> You know, I've been in the business a while. I tend to have an ear <laughs> for this sort of thing. But do, do please go to at Sea Captain Pulse on Twitter, you know, before you know who shuts it down. <laughs> Where the options will be yes, I get the ref, no, I was confused, or I don't care, man. <laughs> Look, I don't want to talk about this anymore. There's also this great moment in Purdue's opening statement. What you're going to see tonight, unfortunately, is an embattled governor a career politician, 20-year career politician, who's going to parrot his political handlers to distract you away from the fact that he sold us out and cost us the majority of the United States Senate. Career politician. Just a reminder, this guy was a senator for six years and then tried to do it for another six years but lost his election. The only reason he's not also a career politician is he's just not good at it. <laughs> it's like Johnny Manziel snidely calling Tom Brady a career football player. Also, let me see if I get this straight. Purdue lost to Ossoff in a runoff in January 2021, two months after the general election in November 2020. So his theory is that while Donald Trump and the entirety of the Republican Party were screaming their heads off claiming the election was stolen, Democrats were able to secretly rig a second election without anyone noticing. So when Rudy Giuliani was flying across the country, leaking like a busted muffler, and Republicans were <laughs> scanning ballots for secret watermarks and bamboo fibers from China, they just missed the piles of fraudulent ballots being dumped out of trucks labeled what? Election Riggers Incorporated? <laughs> Republicans have made it clear they will debase themselves in the most humiliating ways possible to slink back to Trump and earn his support. Like over the weekend, when Trump rallied with Ohio Senate candidate J.D. Vance. Vance relentlessly criticized Trump in public and even suggested Trump could potentially be America's Hitler in a recently unearthed message, but has now come crawling back to win Trump's endorsement by mindlessly parroting his various lies and conspiracy theories. Ladies and gentlemen, the thing that Trump revealed more than any policy achievement is that we are living in an incredibly corrupt country. <clears throat> Who would have believed that the Federal Bureau of Investigation, our FBI, would have got an illegal wiretap on a U.S. president? I mean, no one, because it didn't happen. Well. Not no one, because there are people in the crowd who believe it, I guess, the same way there are at least a few people at WWE shows who think the moves are real. <laughs> Holy <laughs> that dude just got hit on the head with a plastic folding chair and didn't even flinch. Also, why do they keep those chairs so close to the ring? And now <laughs> The Rock is cooking something? I didn't know he was a chef. <laughs> These guys just make up and don't even bother to explain it with made-up details because they don't have to. They say they're done with Trump on January 6th, only to change their mind. Their base doesn't care. They claim they never said something, only for tape to prove they're lying. Fox News doesn't cover it. They say the FBI wiretapped the president without proof. The crowd cheers. Because their base supports Donald Trump, the flip-floppingest, most truth-allergic, evidence-free human being who ever stood at a podium and bitched about toilets. So, of course, Vance and all his allies have come slinking back. They've come slinking back to Trump, and Trump is aware of the power he wields over them. And he seems to enjoy reminding them of it and humiliating them with it, as he did with Vance over the weekend. I'm very pleased to introduce the man with by far the best chance to defeat the radical Democrat nominee for the U.S. Senate this November. 
And you know what? You know what? He's a guy that said some bad about me. He did. He did. But you know what? Every one of the others did also. In fact, if I went by that standard, I don't think I would have ever endorsed anybody in the country. You want to know? So many people said so much bad about me. Every one of them, top to bottom, no exceptions. You know, it's really, it's almost like they were right. I mean, if that many people said that much bad about you, at some point you might, you might start to think they, maybe I'm a bad guy. It's funny. Anyway, toilets don't flush anymore. I do love that he constantly reminds every Republican who comes slinking back to him that they had to trade their dignity to do it. They should just make it a full fraternity hazing ritual and force all the Republicans begging Trump for his endorsement to streak naked across the Capitol and take turns getting kicked in the balls. Clearly, that's how Rudy got in. Thanks, brothers. <laughs> I can't wait to be a member of Sigma Chi. <laughs> One of our two major political parties remains captive to an authoritarian cult bent on dismantling democracy with aspiring Republicans across the country from Georgia to Ohio embracing Trump's poisonous and corrosive lies. They don't care if they get caught lying, but they do care if they get caught insulting Trump. That's when they act like they just stepped in some deep <laughs> I'm gonna say it really short so it's hard to clip for a closer look. <laughs> this has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.